Welcome to China Insights. I'm your host, Katie. The 2019 demonstrations in Hong Kong lasted almost a year, turning into a democratic movement that shook the Chinese Communist Party. In June 2020, the CCP imposed a so-called national security law on Hong Kong. This law essentially made whatever was illegal in mainland China illegal in Hong Kong as well. But relatively few people stood out to protest it. What happened? In addition to the violence committed by the Hong Kong police and the CCP-controlled thugs, the novel coronavirus pandemic made it difficult for the city's people to organize in large numbers. In essence, the CCP's plans to crush resistance in Hong Kong benefited from COVID-19. And the Communist Party continues to use the pandemic to reinforce its domination over Hong Kong. Leave Home Safe is an app launched by the Hong Kong government in November last year. On the one hand, it's supposed to help the government monitor and keep track of people in order to fight the pandemic. But on the other hand, Hong Kongers fear that the app's data collection will also be used to help the CCP fight against political dissent. Their fear is well-reasoned. Mainland China's health code app is already mandatory in most parts of the country. A two-dimensional barcode is automatically generated in red, yellow, and green to display the individual's pandemic risk level. The app keeps track of all individuals, and if a person is not classified as green, he or she is prohibited from leaving home. 200 Chinese cities have linked the app with Alipay, a payment service that collects extensive data from its customers. An analysis by a New York Times reporter found that once a user authorizes the software to access personal data, a program called Report Info and Location to Police continuously sends the user's location, city name, and identification code to the server. Basically, the app not only determines in real time whether a person is at risk of infection, but also shares user information with the public security authorities. This information is kept in the central server, and it may stay there for long after the pandemic has passed. In addition, the system has been found to be highly manipulated. Since May 2020, Chinese media have reported that the health code of residents in Wuhan, where the epidemic originated, was preset to red. This meant that everyone in the city was considered infected despite not being tested for the virus. The government of Hangzhou in eastern China has integrated the health code with a social credit system to review all the private details of its users. For Chinese political dissidents or religious believers, their codes have been changed to yellow or red as a way of imposing house arrests using the excuse of fighting COVID-19. That's why the Leave Home Safe app has raised concerns among Hong Kong people. Although it doesn't require GPS authorization, it requires user authorization to use a number of features that involve privacy concerns such as the use of camera, read USB content, and view Wi-Fi connection. Cybersecurity specialists say that currently there are technologies to review one's location by Wi-Fi signal. It is possible to pinpoint any individual with a smartphone. Cherry Picks, the developer of Leave Home Safe, is a Hong Kong-based company. It has been working closely with the Hong Kong government and also provided software solutions to pro-Beijing media, including TVB. One well-known incident involving the company happened in 2012. In the Miss Hong Kong pageant that year, the referendum system designed by Cherry Pigs malfunctioned at the last minute. This caused the popular candidate Tracy Chu to lose the title to Kara Chung. Many Hong Kongers suspect the vote was rigged. Cherry Pigs founder, Jason Chu has close relations with the Hong Kong authorities and tendered projects from it every year. He is also the vice chairman of the government's Innovation and Technology Commission, as well as a member of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. He serves on the council's Belt and Road Committee. The Belt and Road is a massive investment project run by the Chinese Communist Party. In a report, Independent media, Apple Daily, noted that in Hong Kong, association with the Belt and Road means receiving national-level funding and support. Only the most trusted people are allowed to join the Belt and Road-related committees. Hong Kong Secretary for Innovation and Technology, Alfred Wing Hang Sit, said that he will implement the Leave Home Safe app in phases. The department will establish a complete contact tracking platform with the Department of Health, the police, and other departments. In the near future, it may become mandatory for use by the public when they travel. 
Barrister John So, a member of the Hong Kong's Progressive Lawyers Group, told the Mingbao newspaper in November 2020 that it is unacceptable and dangerous for the government to force the public to use the app. He argued that it would set a bad precedent if the government infringed on personal privacy with the excuse of fighting the pandemic. The city has been slowly opening up after the latest lockdown. However, local media have reported that people are being increasingly required to install the Leave Home Safe app in order to enter public venues such as malls, parks or restaurants. Hong Kong has arrested hundreds of people after passing the national security law in June. These include the founder of Apple Daily, Jimmy Lai, as well as the leaders of the protest movement such as Joshua Wong, Agnes Chow and Ivan Lam. The United States and other countries have offered some support for Hong Kong's democracy movement, but it came as too little too late. In summer 2019, when millions of people were still joining the demonstrations, U.S. President Donald Trump called for understanding between the protesters and the Chinese authorities. At the time, the Chinese army was amassing troops in Shenzhen, just across the border from Hong Kong. It seemed like the Communist Party could order a massacre in the city like they did in 1989, when the army killed thousands of demonstrators in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. Only in late 2019 did the U.S. start to consider sanctions against Hong Kong and mainland Chinese officials. That was after the police had crushed several pro-democracy strongholds in Hong Kong's universities, arresting thousands of people and intimidating countless more. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more China Insights.